Hi, life lesson one, the key to happiness. Step one, having a personal relationship with God will change your life. When you seek God with your whole heart and ask him to forgive your sins and you feel that weight lifted off of your chest and your mind, you feel like a million bucks. So that's definitely step one, <laughs> the most important thing you can do. He wants to have a relationship with you. He loves you. He created you to have a relationship with him. Why not trust him today? Step two, once you ask God to forgive your sins, you need to learn to forgive yourself and other people. This is a pretty hard thing to do. I've struggled with this myself for years. But you have to learn to forgive yourself and forgive other people as a key to happiness. Forgive and you will be forgiven is what God said. So God forgave you, so just let it go. He forgot about it. He let it go once you ask forgiveness. Stop beating yourself up over it. And other people harboring stuff against them don't hurt them. It hurts you. It tears you up. So just let it go. God will deal with them if there's something to deal with. Just get it off your back. Put your cares on the Lord and let it go. Step three, learn and grow. <laughs> As you learn or convicted that something you're doing is wrong, change direction and stop doing it. This seems pretty easy, but it can be pretty hard to do. You got to replace the bad habits with good ones because sin separates us from God and makes you feel dirty and depressed. When you first get saved, you feel all that lifted off once you've asked God to forgive you. It's lifted off. The burden's lifted. You feel set free. And why would you continue doing the things that are contrary to God and bring that burden back on yourself? Change direction. Let it go. Stop sinning. Change your life. It feels good in the moment, but it leaves you feeling like garbage. Just stop sinning. I know it sounds, e sounds easy, but it's hard. But you just have to try one step at a time. Put in some effort every day. Do a little better each day. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Lord Jesus. Just ask God to forgive you and do better the next time. Don't willfully sin over and over saying, oh, I can just ask forgiveness. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. Once you ask forgiveness, do your best to stop sinning. Walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. So step four, if you're in a bad situation, you should get out. <laughs> Whatever that situation may be, you know if it's bad enough that you should be getting out. And one way that it can be bad is friends or family that use you. They always have a need, whatever that need may be, and they want to try and push you to enable their habits instead of learning and doing better. It'd be one thing if you could help them out once or twice and they would learn and grow and start doing better, but most people don't do that. They just find something that works that allows them to keep doing what they're doing and they continue on, <laughs> whether it's, you know, and, and I know some people have to do this because it's just how bad their life is. But, you know, if you have to use a food pantry or something, use it. It's there to use. But if you're choosing cigarettes or alcohol or something else to spend your money on and then saying, oh, I don't have money to feed my family. I better go to the food pantry. You know, maybe you should get your life straightened out. It'll make you feel better about it, that you're accomplishing something. You're helping your family out. You'll feel better about yourself. You'll be less depressed by putting in that effort. 
and people like that that just want to keep using you for a handout over and over they will drain you mentally and financially because you feel like you, you just keep your hopes up thinking I can help them I can really help them but then you don't see any change you just waste your effort waste your resources waste your emotion for nothing because nothing changes invest in yourself first and then you'll be strong enough to help others and see when to help and when not to step five set short-term goals that are achievable don't set the bar so high that you're setting yourself up to fail you have to set something achievable that you know you can do in short term you know not something that's going to take you five years to do because you're going to get discouraged and quit pick something that you can achieve soon that'll help you out uh, god says we have not because we ask ask not but we have to do our part you know god wants to he cares for you and he wants to take care of you but a lot of that has to do with him supplying a good job for you and when you go to work it makes you feel better because you earn that living and the harder you work the better you get god will open doors for you to move up the ladder he rewards effort the harder you work the better job he's going to help you get the more you're willing to learn the better the job he's going to help you get and then you'll be supporting yourself supporting your family you know the bible says that you're supposed to work if you're going to eat you, you should work for your bread you should work it just makes you feel good um be happy with the things you have um your spouse uh <laughs> your kids your your home your car um it's easy to look at your neighbor and see what they have or see what the latest and greatest thing coming out and be like, boy, I sure would like to have that. But if you delay gratification, if you wait until you can earn it and pay cash for it, it, it just makes you feel 10 times better. It, it doesn't make sense to borrow in order to have something nice and then that stuff breaks before you get it paid off. And then you're in a situation of, I need something, and you still owe on the last thing. So it's better to be content with what you have, and then you don't have that problem. You, you can just uh, work your way to success. Um, so you should make a budget and uh, spend less than you earn. Having a goal of getting out of debt... Uh, then you can save money instead of something breaking and becoming an emergency, stressing you out. You'll have the money in the account and you can just pay for it and it's no big deal. But when you don't have that money, it is very stressful. Little things become big deals when you don't have the money to pay for it. Uh, step six, uh, stop asking other people's opinions. Everybody has an opinion, and they generally are not going to give you what's in your best interest as far as an opinion. People, we like to think good, but generally people don't want to see you succeed. They held themselves back. They've asked other people opinions, and they told them, Ah, oh, you shouldn't do that, or you'll never make it, so they didn't do it. Well, then they feel bad and hold this for years and years and makes them feel themselves feel bad so then they see someone with initiative that wants to try and better themselves they're not going to give you all kinds of great advice you should go for it they're not going to do that most likely because they like misery loves company and they would rather see you with them down in the pit than you better yourself and do better than they're doing so you have to be careful and just stop asking people's opinions. <laughs> if, if you feel the need to do something, you know, to better yourself, go to school, learn something, 
stop a bad habit. You know, if you have to change friends or whatever you have to do, you have to do that to better yourself instead of just keeping yourself down. Uh, it's a learning, growing process, and it, it's hard. It's real hard, especially if you feel like you don't have any friends, but you're better off with no friends than bad friends that'll drag you down. And eventually you'll find good friends that have the same mindset as you, and you can build on each other and raise each other up instead of <laughs> holding each other down and knocking each other back to the bottom, trying to get a hand over each other. So kick your bad habits to the curb and move forward, doing the best you can. You know, just because a family member did something in the past, maybe one relative was in jail and then the next, rel you know, their kid ended up in jail and then it was your turn and they just expected that you were going to go to jail. Well, you don't have to have that mentality. You don't have to go to jail. <laughs> you can change your mindset and change your family tree. You can be the first generation that says, you know, I'm not going to do what my parents or grandparents did if it wasn't right and it brought us down. You know, maybe the dad walked out on them or the parent was in jail or maybe they were a theft, a, a thief, or maybe they were into drugs or stealing. You don't have to do what they did. You can do better and move yourself forward and start a new family tree for your family and then your kids can do better you can teach them and they can teach their children and you can do better you can start a new family tree now step seven i have this is also super important and that is just to give <laughs> you know if all we do is take in take in take in and we don't let anything out what kind of life is that? You know, whether it's a roll of toll paper or a loaf of bread, you can give and help someone in need. You know, whether it's a minute of your time or one thin dime, give and it'll be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and you will say, my cup runneth over. Well, God bless and shalom.